Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Death Drop. Now, this week, it's with real pleasure I can say that I've got my good friend Stu Heineck here. Um, for those of you who don't know, Stu is an absolute legend in the game. Um, Stu is the author of my all-time favourite sales book, How to Get a Meeting with Anyone, Amazon bestseller. Uh, I think voted one of the, 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 the top uh, sales books of all time. Also author of the book, Get the Meeting. Um, and also... Wall Street Journal uh, art, uh, art, artist. So, um, Stu, mate, thanks a lot for joining me. How have you been? Good, good. And by the way, I, I'm not just an. I mean, I, I'm a very specific kind of artist. I'm one of their cartoonists. Cartoonists, of yeah, course. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. Thanks <laughs> I'm for doing great. I'm doing great. I'm glad to uh, glad to connect and, and and join you on the podcast. Awesome. It's a real pleasure to have you, man. Um, let's go straight into it. So. Stu, look, I've been a big fan of your work and everything. You were one of the people that influenced me to you know, start my business and, and actually start getting into contact marketing. One of the things I don't know is like, where did that all start? How did contact marketing start for you? Oh, man. Well, I, I'll just say, first of all, I didn't start it. <laughs> you know? uh, it's been going on a long time. The, the earliest example I've found is, and involved Leonardo da Vinci, wow. actually. Uh, one of the one of the de Medici family members wanted to meet the count the Count of Milan, and he he uh, hired Leonardo to create something to send to the Count to introduce himself. Um, and it's a famous thing. It's it's a it's a, a lute made of a horse horse's skull. I like I wouldn't send that. <laughs> That's not the thing that I would think of to send. But but it worked, and um, and in fact Leonardo from that point on, and, and the Count became very good friends. Um, so, uh, but, but where did it come from? Really, uh, for my part, it came from sending cartoons around. Very early in my career, I sent, I, I actually had the seminal campaign that I used to introduce myself to the, uh, the vice presidents uh, and directors of circulation and, and consumer marketing at the big magazine publishers in, in New York. And so these time, time and life and Sports Illustrated and, um, the New Yorker and uh, the Wall Street Journal and so on, the Harvard Business Review, Forbes and so on. Um, these were the publications I was going after as clients. And I knew that it wouldn't be easy to reach these people, but I had, I had just finished um, running a test campaign or creating a test campaign for, for two titles. So one was Bon Appetit, the other Rolling Stone. And both of those test campaigns beat their controls and they used cartoons, personalized cartoons to do it, that was my that was my hook. So, for my contact campaign, I sent an eight by ten print of a cartoon. Each one was personalized to each recipient. It was a cartoon about each recipient, and a note that said, "This is a device I just used to beat the controls for Rolling Stone and Bon Appetit, and you know we should put this to the test for your titles." And that campaign cost me, well, let's say about sorry, it's in dollars, but a hundred dollars. What is that? Sixty euros? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, or 50, 60 quid, yeah. Pounds. And so, um, so it didn't cost much. I reached, I reached out, I just had to reach 24 people. And that's really the interesting part about, one of the interesting parts of contact marketing is, it's not about reaching out to mass audiences in this case, it's just reaching out to the people who can change everything about your scale. And that's what happened. You know, if, if I was, when I'm talking to live audiences, I will usually ask, what do you think I got for a response to that? campaign and I'll, write, I'll remind them to not get too wild because um, in, in direct mail, we were always told that that if you get a 1% response rate, you're doing really well. That's kind of a typical response rate, people would say, although <laughs> there is no such number. But if we use yeah. that for number for a moment, 1%, that's, that's perhaps thousands of times better than click-through rates, digital click-through rates. Um, so then I'll say, so what do you think I got for a response rate? And some will get really wild and say maybe 10%. But it was a hundred percent, all of them, uh, all so, of them. So, as you said, it's a twenty-four people, right? Yeah. And every single person responded to you. Everyone responded. Everyone agreed to a meeting. Um, they all became clients. All of them. So it was a hundred percent response rate to the campaign. A hundred percent conversion on the back end. It started my business. It was worth millions of dollars, which means only like half a million dollars uh, uh, pounds. But anyway, millions of dollars to me. It started my business, and it. It all launched from a campaign to 24 people, um, sending them something that they said, "Oh, wow! I, man, I love the way I love the way this guy thinks." 
mean, that was key to it. If, the, if it didn't have that effect, then I wouldn't have met them. So they, they loved the cartoon, the whole, the whole, the whole idea of personalizing the cartoons and, um, and using them in, the, in mail, sending them through the mail. And the fact that the first two tests beat controls for Rolling Stone and Bon Appetit, those are big, big titles. And it, it launched my business with a hundred dollar campaign. That's really um, sort of just, just that, that is what contact marketing is, is like. It's, you don't really, you don't, you don't always have to spend a lot to, to break through, but what you do need to do is be very clever and targeted and, um, or and maybe relevant, which is probably the same, same thing, but you really need to be coming to them with something that they, well, first of all, that's something that astonishes them, I think, and then also something that is relevant and value, valuable to what they're doing and what, you know, just who they are. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know it, it does, look, actually, because you're in this business. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, yeah, it, it is part of my business, obviously, but yeah. um, you're doing it in, in a, a, such a precise means. Get 100% response rates and then bec all becoming customers is, is almost just unimaginable for so many marketers. Um, what's your advice for marketers looking to get started with, with this? Because a lot of marketers are still doing spray and pray. They're trying to hit a lot of people. You mentioned banner ads and digital. Yeah, uh, some simple steps that you can sort of say, here's how you can get started with this. Well, I think the first thing you need to do is you need to change your change your orientation. Um, when you just when you just talked about spray and pray, um, I, that makes me think actually that makes me think of direct mail <laughs> where I started. But, you know, you don't put it out to masses. Of, in this case, you don't put it out to masses of people. You target the people who can change everything. You're looking for people who can change I guess either the scale of your career, if you if you don't own the business, or or the scale of your business, if you are the business owner, um, and then you really want to you want you really have to look at what's going to change. It's not only that they're going to change your life, but you need to change something for them. So what is it? What is it you can bring? What what's what unique thing can you bring to them that they're that they're going to be saying, "Oh my God, I'm so glad you reached out." But also, I love the way you reached out, and I, I just I couldn't resist calling you back because, uh, or taking your call because I've never seen anything like this. Mm. So if you've done that, then, you know, when we're talking about cold, well, this, this is then, then not cold calling at all, is it? It's, it's a very warm call, even though you don't know each other yet. Um, and I would say also, uh, there are a couple of ways to get started. Um, the, I think the quick, besides reading the books, <laughs> the, the, I think, because the, I think they're actually quite valuable for getting started, but you know, if, if you're just, if you're a sales rep and you don't have a big budget behind you and you, um, you, but you want to make a, I mean, we all want to make an impact with our, our efforts. I would say that one thing you could do is you could use something that I call deep personalization in, in this yellow book that, and get the meeting. Um, there, I, I think there are two kinds of personalization. There's broad personalization, kind of like the spray and pray in a way. I mean, it was, it was the big mailings. When I was doing those cartoon mailings for Forbes, they'd send out two million pieces at right. a time. So, um, so that's broad personalization. All I needed to know was what is the person's first and last name. We had data insertion points in the caption of the cartoon. Drop them in. It's a mail merge. It's really easy to do. We didn't need to know a lot. We had some assumptions. I mean, if it's for Forbes magazine and they're sending it to a list of investors, well, we know they're investors. Or if they're business owners, we know they're business owners, obviously. That's all I needed to know. I can then depict them as being very successful, like sort of ultimate, sort of the ultimate success in investing or in the in business. And a cartoon like that is going to—they're going to clip it out. They'll stick it on the refrigerator door. They'll pay attention to the mailing. If we offer an an eight by ten print, let's say of the of the cartoon um, with paid order, we were finding that we we flush a lot of uh, uh, orders with payment out of those campaigns. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's broad personalization or wide personalization, but deep personalization is different. It, it came about when, when social media came about. So we can do a lot of research and find out a lot of things about people that they share it with the world. So mm -hmm. find out what they're interested in. I guess sort of the least common denominator here is find out at least where they went to school mm -hmm. and get them a mug or a, or a t-shirt from the school, perhaps not the strongest uh, approach. No. We found out that they, 
that they um, that they have a pug that they show competitively in, at dog shows or that they're into falconry or I, anything. You can find that out and you can craft a gift um, based on that. And I, you know, I'm saying this very carefully as though it's something new it's nothing new to you. You've built a whole business on this. So I think that's a really easy way to do it. If you know what's gonna, what, how, what's gonna have the right effect uh, or, you know, the kind of effect you want, which is, oh my gosh, thank you so much, man. I love the way you think. Mm. Um, yeah, and there's that, there's that, it's the principle of reciprocity, right? It's the, yes. I want to yeah. give you something back in return because you've taken so much time and effort to actually think about it and make it all about me. Um, so I think that's is, is great advice. Now, I've, I've seen it go wrong in the past though. Right? People, yeah. people think you might be stalking them a little bit how do you define where the kind of the, the threshold is and, and when not to cross it? How do you make sure that people don't kind well, of take it step too far? You know what? I'll tell you one, one aspect of that question is we're in interesting times right now. Um, and hopefully this will be evergreen content. People will be listening to, listening to this podcast for years, but um, right now we're in the midst of the COVID um, pandemic. And so people are working from home and, you and I have had really interesting conversations previously about what people are doing, how, what sellers are doing to counteract that how, or to deal with that, to pivot with it. Um, and so you told a story of, of someone sending beers. I think it was you who is either you or Daniel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, a, a story of someone sending a beer um, and, and then suggesting that they hop on a zoom call and they have, have a beer together. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. You could do that with coffee. Yeah. Coffee would work too. I think those are cool now. I, and I, you know, I think it's someone taking initiative versus someone stalking you, but you still have to deliver it to their home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I found with, with those home deliveries, I, people become much more open to receiving things at home, but I still think you need to ask them, Hey, I have this thing. Can I send it to you? Where's the best, what's the best address to, to send it to and let them decide whether it's going to the office or their, or their home. Um, so that could come come across as stalking uh, if you just figured out where that. And I think it's not there, not that hard to find someone's home address. So um, uh, that could be stalking. That's that's the threshold. Yeah, it's it's just across. assuming and then just getting them in their home. Otherwise, it's like yeah. researching people's uh, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. That, that it's you can all, get so it's all much. Public. Yeah, yeah, it's all public. They they put it out there. So yeah. that's not stalking. They put it out there for our consumption we're just responding to it yeah so i, I love call it. that yeah i wouldn't think that was would be stalking no I, I totally agree um look i remember when i read your book we i think it was uh, one example that was given it was around uh, the sandler book right uh, what was it um you can't teach a kid to write a yes ride a, a tricycle in the seminar or a bike in a seminar and recovered the books to make it about the CEO and that had massive responses. I actually did that myself in my last company. My point really is you must have seen everything. Right? You must have seen so many things tested and you've seen some creative examples. What are the things that you send? What, what, what do you send to people right now? Oh, well, I mean, I still, I still, I mean, it's that same, that original trick of sending someone a cartoon. Okay. But I do it in a couple of ways. So, so one is um, we, and we're, I mean, I should mention this because we're we're going into business here a little bit, and we're going to they, these are going to be on your on your platform. But so one of the things that I use is big boards, and I'll I'll just back up and show you. They are big, so I have to back cool. up. Cool. All right. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so here's a big board, and it's you know it's 18 by 24 inches. It's um, yeah. quarter inch thick. Wow. Uh, I, it's fun. It's a form of um, foam core called the Gator board. Okay. Um, used in indoor signage, actually. So you can see there's a cartoon. The cartoon has been personalized. Oh, you can't see this, but the cartoon's been personalized with the recipient's name. And then on, on the other side is branding a message from the sender to the recipient explaining who they are and why they want to meet with you or what just, what, what's the reason for reaching out and then next steps. Um, and over here, the, the recipient's name and address. So that gets sent. Um, in some pretty pretty nice packaging. So this is corrugated cardboard. Um, I love that. With all that cartoon art, and it's you can't really see it if you get up close to it. It's this mezzotint. I'll try, but I don't yeah. know. It's this mezzotint 
Oh yeah, yeah, I can see it. It's really cool. So anyway, and then so the the, the um, FedEx shipping label goes there, and then open it up, and there's the uh, magical. There it is. Nice, I love that. And so, um, and, and I think that looks like something. It looks like a package that's coming from a cartoon art gallery. And we have this preamble. If if um, if the rep is is um, sending it to someone who has an assistant, then we want to make contact with that assistant, and and the rep will call up and say, "Hi, I'm so and so, and I'm calling because I'm sending a print of a cartoon by one of the Wall Street Journal cartoonists, and it's about your boss." And usually they're saying, "What? Really? Okay." So um, look at the effect you've just had with the assistant. That's not generally yeah. the effect you yeah. have. So. And, and um, it continues, I want it to be a surprise to your boss, but not to you. Would you mind if I send you an email um, and, you, and, and I'll, send you, I'll send you all the details in my contact information. Sure, here's my email address, here's my name. So an email will go out thanking them. And then, then something interesting happens. We also do these cards. So, so it's a card, you know, when it has the senders, in this case, it's my identity on the back, but mm -hmm. a card with a note. I don't think there is a note in here. Oh, there is. It's just a little handwritten note. Um, this card, um, it's kind of, I don't know, it's not obvious as a thank you card, but he's saying, um, he's saying, now Alex is buying a cup of coffee. Is anyone writing this down? Let's hurry up and buy our coffees first. So <laughs> with you on everything, including buying coffee. Yeah, I love but, it. And so when I send it, when we send these just to the assistant, it's just to say, thank you so much for your help on the phone. Greatly appreciate it. It could include a, a card. It could include a Starbucks card, or I don't. I don't know if Starbucks is a big deal in, in the UK, yeah. but um, so and, and <coughs> pardon me. So that card goes out, and then finally, a, one more email. Here's the FedEx tracking information. So there are four touch points with the assistant before the big board even shows up, and so by that time, they're they are um, they're sort of well. Sorry to use a, a US. Um, uh, um, example or, or reference here, but they're quarterbacking that that campaign. They're they're making sure that their boss gets it, sees it, reads it. Um, you, the assistants, are, they're just so important. Anyway, so so that's the way I, I use I use either those big boards or we've actually launched a new a whole new program called Bottomless Box, which is a whole kit of those cards I just showed you that allows you to um, personalize the cartoons and send them out from your desktop. PC and, and laser printer. So those are kind of fun. Um, and, I, and I put some, some of the cartoons that I, I just use because they're my go-to cartoons. If somebody's not calling me back, um, I use this cartoon. So if, you, if it was you, Alex, I, this, he'd be saying, hi, Alex, it's me again. Listen, I don't know if you've been checking your voicemail all last week, but I'm still here at the same number waiting for your call. And so that's a good, you know, it's just sort of, hey, Alex, you're hanging me up. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very so. disarming way to do it. And so I've got five of these cartoons that I just use to, they use them all the time. And um, so that's that's how I do it. I, I use cartoons. That's super cool, man. I absolutely love that. Um, and tell me a bit more about some of the, the, like the real standout ones that you've seen. I mean, you've written about a couple of them. I noticed you've got some stuff oh, yeah. behind you there. You've got some ice creams. What are, what are like some of those those other killer campaigns to kind of inspire people watching and listening? There are so many. People do such amazingly clever things. It's it's just it's amazing. Um, well, one of those is my it, one of my favorites is Dan Waldschmidt's story. Dan is a well, he's a turnaround specialist, and so he but he's also a, an ultra competitive athlete. He runs hundred mile races and he wins. That's amazing. Wow. Um, and he's, he, <clears throat> pardon me, he writes the blog, Edgy Conversations. And so there's sort of this ultra competitive, <clears throat> ultra competitiveness and knife's edge um, aspect to his personal brand, which is, which he all, all of which gets incorporated into his, his outreach campaign. So um, he is, again, he's a turnaround specialist. So he's watching for stories of Mr. Earnings estimates. And um, when he finds one, he has a sword made up for the CEO. And the sword is, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's uh, like an actual sword, an actual sword. And it's, you know, it's made by the prop maker who made all the swords for the movie Gladiator. Um, the sword is, the, the, the blade is engraved with the CEO's name and an inscription. If you're not all in, you're not in at all. Um, it gets put in this beautiful wooden box with a handwritten note. Before I go any further though, here's, here's an example of it. And these things are heavy. And I oh, wow, you've actually got one of these swords. 
here it oh, is. So, so, so when it comes in this wooden box, the note says, I'm not saying you're, you're not doing well, but if it was coming to you, <clears throat> dear Alex, business is war and I noticed you lost, lost a battle recently. I just want to let you know if you ever need a few extra hands in battle, we got your back. <laughs> that's genius. That is so good. And so, and so then the, the blade has something engraved on it, I can see. Yeah. So it's engraved. This one doesn't have my name on it, but um, that's so cool. it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Now, that costs him $1,000 every time he sends one. It's not a cheap send. And it's pretty extreme, as you know. I mean, you're in the business. So that's a, that's a lot to spend on a, on a single object to send to someone. But it's very strategic. Um, he's trying to reach the CEO of a company that's in trouble. That CEO is not open to taking sales calls. Let's say um, they're in, they're under siege, and so Dan needs to do a lot to break through. Um, but he's getting a hundred percent response rate to that campaign, and um, I think that's remarkable. Uh, he doesn't know he's getting hundred percent response rate in that every one of those CEOs is taking his call. Um, not, not all of them are engaging, but everyone, every engagement that he's involved in is worth a million dollars and up. So, mm. so it's worth it to send a thousand dollars to someone who can pr produce that kind of revenue. And um, uh, I, one of the things I think is really interesting about his campaign is he's using a visual metaphor. It's not quite a gift. It is a gift, I guess, but a visual metaphor is it's a visual gag. It's, it's just, you look at it and there's a message in it. No one, no one's sitting around waiting for a sword. I don't think anybody is. Is well, some people are really into swords, I guess. But, <laughs> but you know, to get a hundred percent response rate across all those CEOs, it wasn't because they're all into swords. It's because the sword was the message, and it's a beautiful, a beautiful message. I'm willing to die for you. I'm going to go into battle for you. I will fight right alongside you. That's a pretty fierce message, at a time when they, the CEO, really needs that kind of message. So. Visual metaphors are wonderful. I mean, they're kind of like cartoons too. I mean, a cartoon and humor is about truth um, revealed in a twist. We laugh at something and before we can even finish laughing, we're saying, oh my God, it's so true, isn't it? I, it's so, I, it's, I know someone like that, I've been through something like that. Well, visual metaphors do the same thing. You look at them and you instantly get this point of agreement planted in your brain. So the sword does it, but here's an example of not spending a thousand dollars but more like 20. <laughs> so, so that's what, I, I, it's a cup, cup of coffee. Spill, I love these still. things. Yeah, it's a fake coffee spill. So um, I, I, my, um, my, my contact marketing class uh, students, I, I teach them how to do, or where to get these things, how to get them put together. So, and so they'll, they'll have a, a custom cup made up. So, so that is actually my students. I, um, it's, this is, it's like a, a business card actually. Mm -hmm. And what it's meant to do is be dropped off at the front desk. So you can imagine that um, you, you come up to the desk, the receptionist is there and she's usually she, I don't know. But anyway, the receptionist is waiting for you and saying, oh, what, is, who, what does this person want? <laughs> you know? Here we go again. I mean, I know I've got to parse what they, what they want. Most of the time I have to, I have to sort of push them to the side, if they're, if they're sales reps, especially, I've got to push them to the side. They're not going to come in and meet any of the executives here. Uh, so they're guarding the gate. And <clears throat> if you say, I, I, you know, I'm coming up to, to the front gate because I would love to, love to um, you know, Alex isn't expecting me, but, but um, I, I wonder if Alex might have a few minutes to, to talk and just come downstairs and talk. And, <clears throat> you know, they'll say, are you kidding me? <laughs> He's not coming down. No one's talk. Going to talk to you. Well, okay, that's fine. But would you leave this for him? And maybe it has a Starbucks card in there and a note. And uh, it'll say, Alex, I stopped by. Uh, and it, it, you, you weren't available. It just happened that you weren't available. But I'd love to share a cup of coffee with you on a Zoom call. And I think that would be, you know, when you when that gets brought, brought up to you, I, this is the kind of thing that, and the sword uh, and, the, and other visual metaphors, it's the kind of thing that nobody's going to throw away. They're going to keep it on their desk because it's like it's the kind of stuff I would buy at a joke shop. You know? <laughs> I would love to keep this around. I, I would put that on my desk and leave it there because every time someone walks in, they're going to go. They're going to be saying, "Oh my God, you spilled," you know. And it's a it's a conversation starter. It's they're never going to throw it away. So they're items of fascination, 
And and um, and I, you know, I can I can tell you that when the receptionist says, "No, no, they they can't possibly meet with you right now." When you pop one of these things out, they say, "You know what? Hold on, hold, let me just check." Oh wow! So it actually does work. It kind of has, yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. And here, here's one more. I don't know. I love these fake food items. Here's a, you know, ultra real. They're all they're ultra realistic. I don't know if it comes across. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, so it's, just, it's an, it's an like an ice cream cornetto upside down. Yeah, that's a, a dropped ice cream cone. So all kinds of things you can do with visual metaphors that that I think are incredibly effective and. I think a big part of this is I, you really need to impart a message. Whatever it is you're doing needs to support that message and it needs to do it subliminally. You have to, I mean, when someone sees it, their reaction is the message. It's the message you want and it's already internalized. And that message um, is, is causing them to say, my God, I love the way this person thinks we've got to meet. Mm. who thinks like this right? yeah and sometimes it can be so simple right we i mean yeah. we did one last year during the heat wave and all we did is we sent like these these you know probably 30 dollars each like desktop fans but the message was really simple generating pipeline and booking meetings should be a breeze like you don't need to sweat yeah. it anymore or something like that right yeah yeah and the response rates were 85 percent right people responding yeah. we were booking meetings just by doing that one thing because the visual metaphor it's what really resonates with people and it has that lasting effect as well. Um, you know, I, isn't that interesting because we are talking about numbers that are just crazy, crazy off the scale. And, and, it's, and, and we, almost, we almost sort of just, oh yeah, 85%, sure. <laughs> no one gets 85%, right? People talk about if I change the, um, the subject line of my email, I might get like 0.2% higher open rate and stuff. We're just... Yeah. If you forget about all that stuff and you focus on these big, impactful, targeted campaigns, you can get massive, massive results. You do. This is the only form of marketing that I know of that gets that gets uh, metrics like this. And in fact, um, the highest the highest um, response rate that I know of so far is um, is somewhere between three and four hundred percent, which is another crazy number. Another paradigm that. That contact marketing just busts through, which is that you can get you can get more response. I mean, you can get more people responding to your campaign than you than you than than you addressed. That's not happening in other forms of marketing, and uh, and and then the highest ROI return on investment is sixty nine million five hundred thousand percent, which is a number that is just absolutely impossible to even understand. Mm -hmm. So these. These campaigns, when you, so I, I almost, like, oh yeah, I almost went right by it. Like, yeah, good job. Um, <clears throat> but you have to realize these are miracles of marketing. Yeah. It doesn't happen in any other form of marketing. No, I, I totally agree. I've, I've never seen anything quite like it. And I remember when I started doing it, I sat down with my team, this was years ago, and they all laughed when I said, oh, what are you using that like, personalized direct mail and gifting to do it? That died 20 years ago, man. It's all about, <laughs> it's all about social and everything. So I, I've seen it work for years. It's, it's one of the reasons why I started Reach Desk. Um, and speaking of social, one of the effects that, that we see a lot of the time is that people will post a lot of this stuff on LinkedIn oh, and, yeah. and Instagram. And that's that yeah. kind of goes viral. And people get more traffic and more meetings as a result of that because they're like, wow, I, I, I'm interested in what's going on there. That's exactly, that, that is the reason why these campaigns can produce response rates that are above 100%. Mm -hmm. but because Super cool. they're, they're passing it along or, or it's, it gets this viral share and all of a sudden, I don't know who you are, but I think we need to meet, we need to talk, I, I want some. <laughs> love that, love that. So look, we're coming up for time a little bit here, Stu, but there are a couple of things I, I still want to ask you. Like, what's the best thing that's ever been sent to you? I don't know if it's the best thing. Um, What's your favorite? But it's the one that stood out, and and because of it, just just so it's just the sheer audacity of it. Someone one day, I picked up the mail, and there was a block of wood in the mail, and it was addressed to me. It had a stamp on it, had postage on it, but they just all they sent was a block of wood, <laughs> just a scrap of plywood, and I thought, you know, they didn't spend much on this. Um, it's <coughs> it's utterly audacious. There's a lot of confidence behind the idea, um, and you know there was contact information on it, but that was it. So 
I, you know, it wasn't all that ornate. I don't know. There, just the thing that the thing is that people have done just the most incredible things. Uh, um, I'm not usually I'm not usually the recipient of those though. Uh, it's it's usually stories of yeah, yeah. Uh, things know. that you know someone something that someone did to get Larry Ellison's attention, mm. and suddenly it's three and a half million percent ROI or something and like so, that. And so that block of wood, did that person get the meeting with you? Not only did he get a meeting, but he inspired uh, something that you're not part of. Because uh, I was going to, I, I realized, you know, I don't own contact marketing. I'm the lucky guy who got to name it in my book, but it's something, it's been a shadow form of marketing for a very long time. So I'm, I'm just a lucky guy who gets to, to, to gather up these stories and, and share them with the world. But I wanted to share that as well. So you are now a member, a board member of, of um, the, I'll call it the Meet Awards, but it's M-E-E-T. Yeah. <laughs> so the Meet Awards, um, and we're going to celebrate and and dig up, keep digging up new stories of these outrageous things that people are doing to get meetings and the outrageous results that they get because of that, just the changes in scale that they, that they see because they connected with the right people. So, um, so actually that block of wood inspired, that wasn't what inspired me to, to start uh, put, putting together these, uh, uh, these awards. And I, so originally I was going to call it the block of wood award, but that just doesn't really have much. <laughs> it doesn't quite work, does it? No. Yeah. <laughs> but the meat awards, um, I, he's going to get the first one. I, I just have to honorary uh, the very, very first one. He doesn't know it, but. That's super cool. Well, hopefully yeah, I, he, I just, he won't be listening to this and it will be a surprise, but um, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, hearing what's going on out there in the world and actually judging which ones we think is going to be best. Yes. It's going to be, going to be a it's, ton of fun, man. It's going to be a lot um, of fun. And, and I found out already that, that we're going to be, um, we will be announcing the, the awards or presenting the awards during one of, I don't know which one, but one of the sales 3.0 conferences, they've already invited us to, to be there, uh, uh, invited us to be there and them to be there, our, our home for the, for the award. But that was a, an awkward thing to say, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> awesome man. i'm looking forward to that um i think the final thing and i always ask this and let's focus on marketers if you if you had any advice for like, let's just frame it in like b2b marketing right now of what they should stop doing what are the things that you're seeing out there in the world that you think marketers need to stop doing this because it's just either not working or it's just a waste of time can, can you think of anything off the top of your head two quickly two ideas quickly come to mind one is Stop trying to circumvent the, the executive assistants. Think of them as VPs of access and, and include them in your campaigns. They're really important. They're mm. critical. And sometimes they're, they're the sharpest people in the companies that you're approaching. So, you know, never try to circumvent the, the assistant, um, include them. And then the other one is um, everybody's overusing emails and they're saying, oh, you know, what's in your sequence or here's what my sequence is. Already that's, that's really very impersonal. Um, and, and when you, so I think, I just think it's getting overused. It's not that it doesn't work. It does work, but I think it's getting overused. Automation is probably overused. I mean, like who wants to, who's, who's going to, who's going to engage in an automated conversation? I mean, you know, we can figure it out pretty quickly. Um, and then, and then that copy, just the copy length is just horribly long. So if you're reaching out to someone who's very important, well, their time is important and you need to show respect for that time. So um, it, in my books, I've said, you need to say what you need to say in 12 words or less. So, and when you do that, you can, you can reach some very important people and they'll respond to you, but you've already shown them respect for your time or for their time by, uh, by keeping it very, very short and succinct. Um, so I would say those two things. I, I guess the, maybe the third one is don't be afraid. <laughs> well, you know, you're, you, we're in the same business. So don't be afraid to, to be audacious and, and use some, some cleverness, but make it fit. It can't be a corny thing. It can't be about your brand. It's about them. Um, make it fit and, and you'll be amazed at the results. Oh, mate, I think that's fantastic advice, right? Don't rely on email too much. Be a bit more uh audacious and and i always say reward the gatekeeper right? reward the the executive assistant make them feel part of it it's so, yes. such great advice well Stu, you you will be sent something from uh from me and, and us at reach desk <laughs> just to thank you for your time but um i've been i've been looking forward to this for weeks and i'm so glad that, that we finally got to do this 
thank you so much for joining me today, man. Um, for, for, for people out there, if they want to follow you or get in touch with you, how, how do they do that? Well, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, that's Stu Heineck. Uh, or, I mean, my name is spelled S-T-U-H-E-I-N-E-C-K-E. So you can find me on LinkedIn. You can go to stuheineck.com. Um, and if you want to do it from your desktop, you can find Bottomless Box pretty easily as well. Awesome. Love that, man. Stu, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me on the desk drop. Thank uh, you. For everyone listening, I'll catch you all next week.